I'm going to shift gears a little bit and talk about our involvement in TSAA. I think you'll find it interesting. It does relate directly to ADSB. Avidine, partnered with Massachusetts Institute of Technology, has been contracted by the FAA to prototype, demonstrate, and draft the minimum operating performance specifications for the collision avoidance and alerting algorithms for ADSB. So ADSB is a traffic awareness product that, you know, if you're getting the signals from other airplanes, uh, there's very limited in terms of providing any kind of collision alerting. It's mainly for traffic awareness. It's like it's up to you to do the alerting, essentially, or to determine whether there's going to be an imminent collision. We're developing the actual collision avoidance algorithms that, that will become part of the TSO for ADSB. That will be shared industry wide, and any vendors that make ADSB products will be able to incorporate this application, if you will, and run it on their ADSB product. We will also have some exclu Avidine exclusive features as a result of this program. The first things they did is MIT did an extensive study on mid air collisions to better understand the dynamics of, of how these are happening, not only mid airs, but also reports of near mid-airs. They were analyzing all the data over a 10-year period from 2000 to 2010, which included 112 actual mid-airs from the NTSB database, as well as over 3,500 near mid-airs reported. Interesting data, 59% of all mid-airs take place near airports. Okay, that seems logical. And by near, that's in the pattern or in the vicinity. And you can see from this diagram, of course, there's the pattern, and then there's some radius that's determined as, defined as the vicinity. And then, to me, equally important, I think we all agree that the terminal area is where most accidents occur, but 41% are occurring away from the airport. So out in, in, in route airspace, there's still mid-airs happening at a significant rate. So it's not just... You know, remember these old TIS transponders I talked about earlier? Those only worked in terminal airspace. So once you flew out of the terminal area, you'd get a message on your display that said, no traffic available. If you've flown with any kind of traffic detection system, you hate to fly without one because it, it really gives you a sense of uh, insecurity not knowing where these other traffic are. And uh, this illustrates that there's still some uh, significant risk outside of the terminal area. Another interesting fact, over half of the mid-airs occurred between aircraft flying the same direction. So notice here, if, if, if you see the aircraft out here at 45 degrees off the nose, there's a pretty good chance you're going to see them visually. You're getting the motion, the left to right or right to left motion. If they're coming head on, there's a little higher risk because there's still a speck. Even though they're coming toward you, it's harder for the eye to pick that up. Uh, it's a little tougher to see when you get into this blind spot off to the, to the left or right and the quartering. But a majority of these accidents are in overtake situations, which is really interesting. And 80% of the mid-airs are in the airport pattern. They're happening on final, short, final, or on the runway. So you can see the distribution there as well. And over half the mid-airs occur between two aircraft that are straight and level and cruise. So again, that's when you get out of that 40%. So you're just cruising along and you hear the loud bang and bad things happen. So uh, uh, very interesting and revealing data. This is an interesting uh, statistic here, a, a, a set of data. Notice that uh, there's a... While most mid-airs are on the lower altitudes near a terminal area, notice there's a second peak above 10,000 feet where the fast-moving aircraft live. So in summary, the airport environment is where most of the mid-airs occurred, as we expect, and where most of the near mid-airs are also reported, a higher number, even 67% of the near misses are reported. Encounters between Part 21 and GA aircraft are most often between a GA aircraft in cruise and a Part 121 aircraft transitioning through the same altitude. So one of the things that MIT and, and through the study we do re certainly have to understand is that our traffic situational awareness and alerting, our TSAA application for ADSB, has to be incredibly effective in the terminal area 
and at high density airports to handle lots of airplanes moving in different directions. Avidyne's ADSB solutions we previously announced. Our transponder is a MODES transponder that meets the mandate for 1090 megahertz out. Our TAS A products, which we'll talk more about, is our active traffic system with uh, ADSB in capability. That'll give you the ADSB in again over 1090 megahertz. So our, these products will be the first to implement this TSAA logic that we're talking about. But again, that will be rolled over into the MOPS over the next couple of years. And uh, that will be an industry standard. They'll, they'll actually modify TSOC 195 in order to incorporate those, uh, those minimum operating performance specs. So we want to introduce, at Sun and Fun last week, we introduced Veritas technology which is really Avidyne's branding of this TSAA collision avoidance logic. Of course, Veritas is a Latin word that means truth. We believe Veritas is really going to be showing you the true traffic picture. You're going to get the active component along with ADSB, along with the collision avoidance. We're going to correlate the active and the passive targets. We're going to have better alerting capabilities so that you're going to get second alerts and reinforced alerts if you're not taking appropriate action. It's going to do a much better job of eliminating nuisance alerts. One of the biggest problems with any traffic system is what we call nuisance alerts or the continuous ignoring by the pilot of the alert because they believe it's not really a threat. Uh, there have been numerous accidents where pilots have turned off their traffic system. They might be flying in close formation and they know the guy's out there so they turn off the audio and of course then the other aircraft or themselves make an abrupt movement and, and bad things have happened. So if you're in a close formation but you're not a threat, we don't want to be giving you an, an alert that you're going to ignore. But as soon as something starts to happen where it, it might be a, a collision imminent, we want to be able to give you the, an alert that means something to you, eliminate this crying wolf scenario that we've seen so much. So that's what Veritas is about. It means more accurate traffic alerting and no nuisance alerts. There's two additional terms as part of Veritas and ADSB called PAS and CAS. Uh, CAS is the fixed hockey puck of space around your airplane, and PAS is the dynamically computed protection zone around the airplane based on your speed and your, and your velocity and your direction and whether you're turning and whether you're climbing or descending. Just to compare the CAS between an active traffic system or a TCAS system and ADSB with Veritas, we've actually tightened up the, the tolerances and this gets back to why ADSB is so important because it's so much more accurate. We're tightening up the tolerances. This big yellow shaded area around the airplane is the is the TAS CAS. Notice it's over a half a mile radius. So it's 1.1 mile diameter. It's a half mile radius around the airplane and plus and minus 800 feet. And what that means is anytime the system detects that any airplane that comes within 0 .1, uh, 0 0.55 nautical miles of you, it's going to set off an alert. So if you're in the pattern and you're a half mile in trail of somebody, you're going to be continually getting an alert. With Veritas, We've tightened up the CAS to by five times to 500 feet, so it's a much tighter tolerance. So now anything within 500 feet is going to, and plus and minus 200 feet, is going to set off the alarm. So you can see we've significantly tightened up the tolerances uh, using the, under this TSAA uh, collision avoidance algorithm. This is another illustration that kind of shows here. I'm, I'm here's my own ship. I'm cruising along, and there's an aircraft that turning in toward me. You can see as I step through this, notice the size of the PAS, which is the dynamically computed space. The CAS is the red circle around, but the PAS is this big circle. As I move along, the PAS is going to get smaller because it, it senses the closure rate is getting less as that aircraft kind of turns parallel to us.
So while here we're going to get an alert because he's within 30 seconds of us, but it's also a lot tighter tolerance. We're not going to get the false alert back here. It is detecting this closure rate is changing. It's getting less. So that's kind of showing you how it's dynamically changing. It's not some fixed distance. This diagram gives you a better, I've kind of got a close-up here, I'll show you. Here I am flying along, I'm, I'm in this blue airplane here, and this is a, an intruder aircraft, and I'm, I, I can, I, I've detected that aircraft uh, on my display, but as it gets closer, you can see I'm continually computing. Notice the diameter is getting bigger because it's starting to turn toward me. I'm going to get a traffic alert when it detects I'm 30 seconds from imminent collision, and now I can do something about it. In this case, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go on along. Or maybe I've deviated or whatever, but you can see I, I've gotten an alert based on his projection of where he's going to be 30 seconds out. Here's the different symbology. If you if you flown with a TCAS system or a TAS system, you have these non-directional targets. Of course, this is the ground targets, which are new. We're going to show you ground targets in brown or tan. Those are new. Those weren't available. Those weren't differentiated with, with TCAS systems. But with Veritas, we're going to show you those in a different color so you'll know they're on the ground. Now we're going to add these directional targets. Now you, you've, you're going to get a, a sense of which direction they're moving. Here's a, a, a traffic display. You can tell a lot about each of these different targets. These folks are sitting on the ground right here. Let me change colors so you can, uh, I don't know if it'll show up. Let's try it. Nope. Uh, but you can see there's guys on the ground. There's a Southwest Flight 762. If you hear him talking to that guy on the radio, you know exactly which guy it is. He's moving up and away from you. He's 1,100 feet above you. Here's a guy that's 800 feet below you, but he's climbing at the yellow target here. Uh, so you can see, you can know an awful lot more about the about the targets just by what you see on the screen here. Avidine's active traffic systems uh, are going to include Veritas which is this TSAA logic we talked about. It'll receive ADSBN via 1090. It'll get the uh, UAT targets via ADSR from the ground. And it'll also receive mode AC targets via the ground-based TISB. We have three different models, the TAS-A series, we call them. We'll still offer our entry-level TAS-600, which is a non-A, non-ADSB but it'll give you active traffic at a significantly lower cost. So, so here's, a, again, a scenario of a host aircraft with TAS A. Notice the 1090 guys, we're going to see those guys directly with ADS-B in. Any, the 978 guy, we're going to actively interrogate him with our active traffic. This guy's 978, but notice he's, a, he's, not, he's not within line of sight of the ground station, so we may not get him over ADSR, but we'll actively interrogate him. We'll also actually, actually actively interrogate this mode AC guy over here. But once we receive the ADSR, we will get the 978 guy, and if this guy gets through to the ground station, we'll get him over ADSR as well. Here's a couple more flight scenarios you might find interesting and helpful. So here, I'm on a two-mile left base. Here's a, an intruder aircraft out on a three-mile final. I've got a TAS system on board, or a TCAS. Uh, so I've got a protected our collision avoidance zone, a CAS of 0.55 nautical miles. In this scenario today, I'm going to get a traffic 3 o'clock low, one-mile alert, because I'll see this guy on my screen. And with the TAS system, what I'm probably going to do is put the throttle forward, and I'm going to climb and get the heck away from him. And I'll end up doing a go-around because I don't want to take any chances because I've got an alert and I've got to do something about it. With Veritas and ADS-B, I've got a much more protect, tighter CAS zone and protected zone. In this case, I'm projecting where I'm going to be in 30 seconds and where he's going to be, and I know there's not going to be a conflict based on my speed and his closure rate. In this case, I can get in and go ahead and make my uh, approach and not have the expense and the time lost of having to go around because of a nuisance alert. Here's another scenario where I'm on parallel runways, and maybe the runways are a half mile apart, and with a TAS system, that's close enough to set off a, 
an alert. Now, I may go ahead and proceed with my approach, but now I've got my traffic system complaining at me all the way down the approach, which is, again, a nuisance alert might cause me to want to shut the thing off, and then it won't be there to protect me when I really need it. With the Veritas system, again, tighter tolerances, I'm not going to get that alert. I know I'm on a parallel approach. I'm, it, I'm not within the tighter tolerances, so I'm not going to get the nuisance alert. I can continue down the parallel approach without having this thing nagging at me. Yet I still have the protection in case that guy deviates into my airspace enough to get 30 seconds of warning. Here's another example where I'm in trail downwind. Uh, I've got, I'm entering the pattern. Maybe I'm a half mile separation. Again, it's going to set off the alarm because I'm, I'm close enough with a traffic system. I'm going to get a continuous alert as I move through the pattern. With the TSAA tighter tolerances, I can see the guy on my display down here, but I'm not going to get those continuous uh, nasty alerts unless something changes and, and uh, that guy slows way down or, or, or I'm not maintaining speed and I, I catch up with him or whatever. Avidine has a website called ADSB.com. You've seen our little bumblebees all over these slides as we move through. ADSB is uh, uh, ADS-B.com was already taken, so we we adopted the little bumblebee as our mascot in ADS-BEE. -E. You can go on there; it's a portal. Anytime we see a good article about ADSB, we post it here, so it, you'll find it as a good portal to uh, download information. Again, ADSB. We also have a thing called Avidine Live, where you can. It's a forum. We've got uh, frequently asked questions are posted up there. Anytime those are updated, you'll be alerted, and we'll try to keep you up to date on what's going on with Avidine. That's all I have. I want to thank you for joining me. Fly safe, everybody, and have a great day.